Did you know I have a rare psychological disorder? It's called repeated compulsive affirmatives. And it's nothing serious. It just means that every time somebody asks me to do something, I just instantly blurt out, yes, I'll do it. Usually before I have any idea what I'm getting myself into. So when James Wright told me he was organizing an insane multi-person tool restoration, I agreed without giving it any thought. And then months later, this absolute roach arrives in the mail. Now, I've seen some rough planes in my life, but this one is a gem. James enjoys diving, so I think he actually found this one at the bottom of the ocean. The wood is trashed, but luckily Eric from Hand Tool Rescue already restored the casting and redid the Japanning, which is an incredibly labor-intensive form of black paint. And James himself redid the handles in what looks like a combination of live oak and red heart. They look great. He even did the knob in a fancy octagonal shape. Show off. My job is to remake the body. Whoever owned this plane clearly used the hell out of it because they had to laminate on this extra piece of body. But that was in like 1890, so it's falling off. Oh, and it just hit the camera. <laughs> We're off to an excellent start here. The body doesn't look too complicated, and I want the finished product to be a little flashy. So I'm going with this figured sycamore as the primary wood. And I think it would be cool to do a laminated construction with a stripe of contrasting wood. That way, my part will match James's fancy handles and tie the whole thing together. You might notice that I'm down in my basement shop. Yep, that's how long this project has been going. I got as far as splitting the body blank and planing it flat before I, Packed up the entire shop, broke down all the machines, moved everything into a commercial building, rebuilt the floor, painted the walls, hung lighting, reassembled everything, got COVID, recovered from COVID, and added sound treatment to all the walls and ceiling. And then, as if nothing had happened, I got back to our little restoration project. I made this strip of black walnut and glued it to one half of the body blank. I've got blue tape on the other half so the whole thing won't stick together. Once everything is nice and square, I hammer in a couple of little brads and nip them off, leaving sharp little points. When I press the two halves of the body together, I get perfectly aligned holes that I can drill and plug with little bits of dowel. Now I can take the body apart and put it back together over and over again while keeping everything lined up. Traditionally, wooden planes were made by taking a block of wood and then just cutting the throat and everything else directly out of that block with chisels and some specialty tools. And this was kind of a lost art, but a lot of modern craftspeople are bringing it back. James Wright knows how to do it. Um, I do not know how to do it. I have never tried this before, and I don't think this project is a good time to experiment. I am already holding things up really badly. I've had this plane for months. I need to get on with it. So instead of cutting it out of a single block of wood, I've split it in half, and I'm using like a half lamination approach. I can split the body apart, saw out the different parts, chisel them, put it together, and take it apart over and over again, checking my work and having really easy access to the interior of that plane. This approach isn't just easier, it's also more reliable. I'm almost guaranteed to get a good result. The important part is the layout. Plane making is all about geometry, and whatever I do with the wooden body needs to match the metal parts, so all the angles and all the spacing has to be very precise. Then I can split the body apart and continue all the layout lines down inside the throat. With everything marked, it's pretty easy to saw down those layout lines and then start popping the waist out with a chisel. I do have a problem with my chisels, since this is my narrowest bench chisel, and it's too wide to get through the throat of the plane. That's not a big deal. I can just use a file to reach in the mouth and take out the last little bits of wood. But am I really saying that I don't have a tool? Me? The worst tool hoarder in all of America? The chisel's gotta be in here someplace. This is perfect. But it's so rusty and dull. It needs a complete restoration and I'm in the middle of a project. Oh, I know what to do. I'm just gonna use my electrolysis ring. We cut a ring out of plywood and wound it with copper wire, and then we connected that to a power source. It's just a few batteries. And that electricity makes a weak electrical field inside the ring. Oh, <laughs> it's live. If I just slowly push the chisel through that electrical field, it pulls the rust right off the metal, and I end up with a perfectly clean tool. Even the handle looks new. Of course, 
My hand's a little bit numb, but that usually goes away in a couple hours. Pretty soon, I'm paring down to my layout lines and getting nice, crisp edges all around the throat. Now, just like with any plane, the bed needs to be super flat so that iron can sit and cut properly. Getting a flat bed isn't easy, but there's an old trick that really helps. I take a plain iron and color the back with black magic marker. When I rub that iron down in the throat, the marker only gets rubbed off on the high spots, and those pick up the black color. Plane makers used to hold the iron above a candle flame until it got colored in black soot, which works really well for this. It's easy to see all the spots that need to be trimmed. I repeat this process a few times until the black comes off evenly around the bed. Then the high spots are gone and the bed is level. My plane body looks awesome and I'm feeling very proud of myself. Let's compare it to the original. Yep, mine looks great and just needs some shaping. But wait a second. Didn't the original body have another piece glued to the bottom? Ooh, yeah, somebody added that part because the body got worn down and was too thin. Did I make mine too thin? Yes, I totally did. I cannot figure out how I got this wrong. I measured everything so carefully and still my body ended up way too short. So here's why that matters. When you have a wooden plane like this with a metal adjuster, well, that mechanical adjuster can only move the iron in and out by a pretty small amount. It's not a big range of adjustment. So if your body is too thick, the iron won't stick out of the mouth at all. And if your body is too short like this, well, it's not gonna get back up into the mouth. And both of those things are really important. You need this body to be a pretty exact thickness. And somehow, I got that wrong. However I did it, it needs to get fixed. The best thing is to add a bit of wood to the top of the plane. I'm using walnut so it matches that centerpiece I used, and this whole laminated construction is going to end up looking intentional instead of a total mistake. When the glue dries, I just have to trim the extra wood to match the existing throat and true up the bed again. The repair takes hours, but it's a lot better than starting from scratch. Now, I'm finally ready to glue the body together. I've taped pieces of pine to the sides to spread clamping pressure and get a clean joint. I've got a couple little gaps at the corners, but I can slide some plain shavings in while the glue is still wet. After the glue is dry, I trim those off, and no one will ever know. The rule with any tool build is first, make it work. Second, make it pretty. I'm confident this tool is going to function, so now I can get down to the shaping. I take off the bulk on the bandsaw and then use a draw knife to continue with the heavy shaping and a spoke shave to refine the curved sides. So now I have to take this metal casting and make it fit with my wooden body. And this is a fairly complex shape. The bed of the plane continues up into here, so that has to match up. Then the frog has to bolt in on top. And of course, there's this curved section back here, which has to fit down into the plane body. For that curve, I found a socket that was an exact match, and I used that to lay out the shape on the new body. I sawed away most of the waste, and then I used a combination of gouges and chisels to slowly work down to my layout lines. The basic shape was easy to cut, but the final fit between the wood and metal parts needs to be very precise. The next several hours was an agonizing process of making tiny adjustments, checking fit, removing a little bit more wood, and checking again. Stanley would have made this plane in a factory, using dedicated machines for each operation. Copying that kind of work by hand is challenging and time-consuming. Finally, the casting fits perfectly, and I can trace it and do the final shaping. When I first got this project, I had planned to add all sorts of details to the body. Maybe I could change the shape or add carvings. In the end, I was happy to just make a straightforward copy of the original. That shape is deceptively complex, and duplicating it was challenging enough. To get the frog installed, I need a very specific hole drilled at the correct angle. I'm using a protractor to line things up, but it's still difficult to get that shallow angle. Just as I get going, the drill bit slips out and I make a hilarious noise. I swear I didn't do that for the camera. I guess that's just the noise I make when something goes wrong. Hold on, one more time. I'm the one who did it and even I think it's funny. After that, Everything is finally done and I can test assemble. 
I drilled my holes carefully and I'm waxing all my screws so nothing splits on the way in. Once I get the whole plane assembled, I give the body a coat of boiled linseed oil to pop the grain and make it a better match for James's outstanding handles. I'm going to follow that up with a coat of shellac, just for protection and a little bit of shine. At the end of the day, this is a display piece and I want it to look really slick. So, how'd it come out? Honestly, I'm really happy with it. Looking back on this project, I can say that I underestimated it badly. I looked at the original piece and I thought, oh, it's a block of wood and I bolt the other thing to it. That's going to be easy. I'll knock that out. And I was completely wrong. This piece of wood is a complex shape and it was done totally by machines in a factory. Replicating that by hand is not easy and it took me a long time. There were a lot of setbacks. But now looking at the finished product, I'm proud of it. It looks good and it matches the things the other creators have done. And I got to be part of this big multi-creator project, which is really exciting too. These are people I really respect. And hey, if watching this video got you interested in transitional planes, you can build your own. I've made this one, which is a jack size, and this one here, which is more of a triplane or a jointer plane. It's just a few parts from a metal Stanley plane and then some scraps of wood, and you get a fully adjustable plane that also has the lightweight and smooth glide of a wooden plane. I've got a video about that and a complete set of plans that will guide you through the entire thing. Uh, I also have a video that tells you about transitional planes in general and their history and what they're good for and all that stuff. As I wrap up here, big thanks to James Wright who generously included me in this project and has been very patient with me as I moved shops and delayed the whole thing. He's been great through the whole thing. Just like my patrons on Patreon who make all this stuff possible. If you'd like to be one of them, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger and check out all the rewards we've got for the people who make these videos possible. This has been a fantastic project and I was really happy to share it with you. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.